Hi, I'm Teresa from Sewn Together and welcome to part two of our Diamond Attic Windows Sew Along. So today we are going to start stitching our segments together to form little diamond shapes. Um, so you will need to have pre-prepared your half hexagons in two colours, so your light and your dark as well as your diamond shapes, which you were, we, we talked about in the previous video about doing them from a feature fabric. And then also you'll need your little isosceles triangles as well. And they're from your feature fabric as well. The only other thing that you're going to need um, is a needle and thread. So I'm going to be using Wonderfill Deco Bob today. It's a super fine thread. Um, it's very, very strong. Um, I will show you close up. Um, why I use that thread and how I use it. The other options are you can use Invisifil, which is also a very, very fine thread. And the other thread that I prefer is um, Superior Threads Bottom Line Thread. So they are my three preferences. If you have purchased from me the little packs of Deco Bob bobbins in the three little different colorways, they are exactly the same thread as I'm using today. It's just that I'm using it on a spool. So if you haven't already prepared your pieces, go back and watch video one and I will go through how to prepare your pieces for you. For those that are just catching up, this is our diamond attic windows cushion. This is what we're making. And we are using the wonderful Epiflex templates. So I'm gonna zoom in so you can see what we're doing with my stitching and let's get to the fun part. Okay, so it's time to start our stitching. So I've just changed to a darker surface. This is actually the back of my rotating cutting board. So I'm hoping you can see the thread. I've got my thread, uh, my needle already threaded and knotted. Um, so this is our little component that we are constructing. So we've got two half hexagons and our diamond. So what we're going to do is we're going to start our first seam that we're going to stitch is this one here, which is our two sections of our half hexagon. So we're going to place those together, right sides together. And we've got these little tails on this side. So I'm actually going to start my stitching on the left hand side and stitch to the right. For the right handed girls, you're going to stitch from the right hand edge to the um, to the left so you would actually turn yours over again so that you've got your tails at the end of your row of stitching rather than at your beginning it's just easier to get it organized it's just easier to, to start without the tails in the way so I am going to just slide my needle up under my seam allowance into the point of my fabric and you'll notice that my two half hexagons are exactly the same size and we are going to stitch these together. So for my knot, I, um, I call it a figure eight knot. There are lots of different names for it and there's lots of different ways that people do it. So the way that I do it is that you will find that um, I do one little stitch in the corner and then in the same place, or just beside it, bring your needle through, but only halfway. Get those out of the way. So my needle is halfway. Now my thread is attached in two different places. So it's attached at my fabric and it's attached at the eye of my needle. So the thread from my fabric, I take around my needle anti-clockwise and the thread from the eye of the needle, I take around the needle clockwise. So the first piece I have wrapped this way and this second end. And what I have is I have a loop of fabric of thread caught up in a piece of fabric and it creates a figure eight. So when you do this, just to pull it through really slowly, and if one loop is larger than the other, just pull that thread, okay? So I call that a figure eight knot. Lots of people call it different things. Give it a practice, and if you find that you still can't manage it, just pop your needle through 
your seam allowances on both of your fabrics. And pull it almost all the way through until you have just a little loop of fabric of thread very close to your fabric. Put your needle through the loop and it will form a knot and then do the same thing again just over the top and that will give you a nice secure knot as well. I'm so in the habit of doing my figure eight knot. I almost did it without thinking. There we go. Now to form our stitches, we have got two nice even edges. So our thread just goes through. You can feel the edge of the template. This little triangle piece are giving me grief. I'm going to just move those out of the way. Pull your thread through and just continue stitching along and you can feel the edge of the template. So the combination of the Epiflex templates, the very fine thread and the fine needle allows you to just grab one or two threads in your seam allowance. And so you will have almost invisible stitches. So I'm using a pale gray thread so you don't need to use a thread that matches. You just need to use a thread that will blend. So gray blends with greens. So I always use gray when I'm stitching greens. And our stitches need to be about the same distance apart as if you were stitching on a sewing machine. So most of you will be familiar with machine stitching and you will have your stitch length set on about 2 or 2.5, 2.2. So it's around about, let's say, a sixteenth of an inch. So you don't need a million stitches. You don't need your stitches on top of each other. If I pull this through, it's about one, two, three needle widths apart. And I'm just coming up to where my little tail is in the road. So we don't cut these off because these are our seam allowances. If we cut them off, we would have no fabric in our seam allowance. All we're going to do is just simply move that out of the way and we are going to stitch to our corner point and knot our thread and our first section is done. Remember that this is a new skill for a lot of you. So you may feel that at this point it's all fingers and thumbs and the pieces don't line up properly and my stitches are really hard to get and it's, um, you know, I'm never going to manage this. It is a new skill for you. So be patient, just enjoy it and just relax while you're doing it. If your stitches can be seen from the outside, that's okay, it just proves that you've made it. So it's your hand stitching. So I've come to the end and again, I'm going to do my knot. So my thread that's attached to my fabric goes around my needle clockwise or anti-clockwise. And then the, the thread that's attached to my needle eye goes the opposite way. And I'm just gonna pull that through. That's my figure eight knot. I only need one knot. I'm going to just sink my tail by just burying my, my thread for about oh, an eighth to a quarter of an inch inside my seam allowance, clip my thread, and while my ends are the same, I am going to 
not the end of my thread so it's ready to start my next lot of stitching. Now my favourite knot again is pop the thread on your forefinger, pop your needle over the top, wrap the thread around the needle and hold those wraps between your forefinger and your thumb and then just slowly pull your needle through and you'll have a knot at the end. Done. So let's open this up and you can see that my stitches are virtually invisible. Okay, I have had a bit of practice, but honestly, the trick is to use a thread that blends with your fabric and the finer the thread, the less obvious it's going to be. So the fine thread, the fine needle, and the EpiFlex template allow you to just take little bites of your fabric. So just a couple of threads in your seam allowance and give you almost invisible stitches on the back, on the front. And when you take your templates out, you'll find that they will almost disappear. And then on the back, you can see a few stitches. That's okay, I can live with that, that's the back. That's no problems for me. So that's step one. The next section is we are going to sew in our diamond shape. So with our diamond shape, I'm going to turn these around and show you the one that we've already got completed. So we are going to stitch, I'm left-handed, so I'm going to stitch from the left corner to the center and from the center out to the right. For the right-handers amongst you, you're going to stitch from the right-hand edge to the center and then from the center out. The techniques are identical, it's just that we are going to be stitching in the opposite direction. Now, you will see that your diamond shape and your half hexagon line up perfectly. When we start to stitch these together, what we need to do is we need to make sure that it's our point that's perfect. If we have any little irregularities, we want it to be on the outer edge because that's easier to fix than in our center. So I'm going to put those right sides together and I am going to line up my pieces for my center point perfectly. And just to make my life easier so I know that doesn't shift, I'm going to pop just a little clip on there. And I'm going to start stitching exactly the same way and I'm going to stitch from this point to the center. So let's start our thread. I just slide up in through the seam allowance. Don't pull it too tight or you will your knot will pop all the way through your fabric. Again, do your knot of choice at the beginning. We're going to stitch all the way to the center and do a knot, but we are not going to cut our thread. So let's start stitching. Nice and gentle relaxing. One of the wonderful things about English paper piecing is that it's such a portable project. Once you've got your pieces prepared, all you really need is a needle, a thread, um, and um, a little pair of thread snips. So it's a very, very portable project. Okay, just a few stitches. I'm heading towards the center. And once that clip just gets in the way, I will remove it. The other thing to remember is that you will be gripping your fabric. Try not to grip it too tightly. Lots of people who just start their English paper piecing find that they get pains in their thumbs from gripping these too, too tightly. You don't need to grip them tightly. Just hold them in place. If you are new to English paper piecing or hand sewing in general, I suggest that you 
um, pace yourself and just do a few minutes of stitching at a time. Make sure that you take very regular breaks. We've got lots of times to get time to get this project done and we don't want you to be suffering any pain in your hands because of it. I'm going to just move that out of the way and continue stitching right up into the corner. And again, I'm going to do a knot. So you do your knot of choice in the corner. I'm going to do my figure eight knot. You can go quite fast at um, this after a little while. And it is really good because you can sit in front of a movie and do it as well. And as long as you're not sitting in a theatre in the dark. That could be a challenge. Okay, one more stitch. And my knot in the corner. Okay. That's my knot. And so if I flip it over, you can see that it is stitched perfectly along this side and we have this remaining section to go. So we are just going to fold those two pieces together and align the edge of our half hexagon with the point of our diamond underneath. And I like to plop, pop a little clip on there and that just holds it in place for me so I don't have to worry about that. This end is where we're going to start to stitch and our Epiflex templates bend really easily, so they're flexible. So we are just going to line up our corner pieces right here in the center. And again, we start with a knot. And just Continue stitching, so whatever your preference is for your knot, just make sure you do one in the centre. That holds up all our pieces together. The other reason that I knot my thread at the beginning and the end of each row of stitching is if for some reason we do get a snag on our, on our project after it's been completed and something gets caught, and a thread in our seam is broken, we've got a securing knot at the beginning and end of each short seam. And so that if something happens and the thread breaks, it's only going to perhaps undo and to, to each segment. So it makes it easy for us to repair if we need to. Or if by chance we decide that we don't like that particular color, or that fabric has a tear or floor, um, we can easily change just that one segment. So let's just continue stitching. Now, as I get further along here, my tail from my diamond is actually in the way. So I'm going to take, move my little clip off. And the tail for the diamond, we again, we don't want to cut them off. We are just going to roll it out of the way. And I'm going to stitch to the end. Almost there. Just a couple more stitches to get to our corner. Go, final stitch. I'm going to do my knot in the corner and you do your knot, whatever your preference is. Pull that through. And I just sink my tail just to hide my tail of my thread and clip. Go. And our section is done. So we are going to complete 30 of these sections. 
So you can see that my stitches are almost invisible. I have a couple of thread dif th threads difference on this edge, which will is just to do with the way I folded my fabric. That will be fine when we come to join it together. We will be able to make allowances for that little, it's a couple of threads, it's going to be fine. You can hardly see any stitches on the front. You can see a few on the back. Let's pop our seam allowances back where they go. The other thing is that I see people who get their English paper piecing and they go, oh, but you can see through it. If you did that with your machine stitching in exactly the same way, you would be able to see through it as well. So just keep your stitches around about the same size as you would if you were machine stitching. Um, so just a couple of millimetres apart. They don't need to be on top of each other. So you don't need a million stitches. Um, just um, about two millimetres to two and a half millimetres apart. So about three times the width of your needle. You are going to complete 30 of these little sections. And then with the remaining half hexagons, you have five light and five dark. You're going to attach a triangle to each of these in exactly the same way. Now, it doesn't matter which way the seam allowances are going on the triangles, um, they are all going to work out perfectly fine. So just stitch those on however you feel most comfortable. If you have any questions, you're welcome to comment below. And um, we also encourage you to join our Facebook group for all of our sew alongs. And if you go to Facebook and just search Sewn Together Sew Alongs, please answer the questions so that we know that you're a real person. Um, join our Sew Alongs and you can have a look at the lovely inspiration, the fabrics that the other girls have used, get some inspiration, ask some questions, keep motivated. So we invite you to join us and next uh, in our series of videos, we're going to start joining these components together. So we'll see you then. Bye.